Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two sweets and we love design. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to tell you about how Le Corbusier <laughs> wanted to change the Stockholm city plan in the 30s. And of course the story behind mm. it. We don't often talk about architecture, but we're making an exception today mm. because this is far too interesting not to tell you. So let's get into it. Le Corbusier, or Charles Edouard Chanaré, was one of the world's most influential and important architects and a true pioneer of the modernist movement. His radical building designs reinvented the concept of modern living. He was able to combine the functionalist ideas with a strong sense of expressionism. But today we're not going to talk about his many successful buildings, but instead we're going to focus on his city planning projects. These were not as successful or appreciated as his building designs. Few to new plans were ever realized, the, despite the city of Chandigarh, India. We talked about it earlier. Uh, so the question is, why was such an admired architect uh, such a failure when it came to city planning? Well, you soon understand why. In the 20s, Le Corbusier, armed with his manifestos, traveled Europe and held countless lectures. During the same time, he took on the role as city planner, and a quite radical one to say the least. You could say he deviated from commonly accepted beliefs and practices. Many of his trips ended with him working on a new city plan, and in 1933 Le Corbusier visited Stockholm to hold two lectures. He was invited by the Swedish Architects Association, and in the audience were the top two Swedish functionalists Sven Markelius and Gunnar Asplund. During this exact time, coincidence or not, a competition was held for a new Stockholm city plan, and of course Le Corbusier contributed with his idea. Among the almost 450 contributions, Le Corbusier's was the most radical one and the most noticed one. And his plan was called Housing Park and consisted of a plan to totally wipe out most of Stockholm city to instead build only five gigantic buildings. Well, gigantic isn't really a word strong enough. Perhaps I should say monumental, colossal, enormous, well, something, they are huge. <laughs> and four of them would be located in the northern part called uh, Normalm and could uh, inhabit 170,000 people. Uh, and located in the southern part uh, called so uh, Södermalm, uh, only one building around 45 meters high would inhabit 110,000 people. And this building was supposed to be 4,000 meters long. And according to Le Corbusier, Stockholm was an example of poorly utilized land. Um, and with his new plan, there was space for air, sunlight and parks. He also wanted to make new roads above ground level to let people move around in the city without having to be bothered by traffic. And that's kind of radical thought. Uh, yeah, a good mm. idea, actually. Um, and nowadays, it's easy to laugh at such devastating and almost science fiction looking plans. But back then, several architects were quite excited. The art and design critic uh, Gotthard Johansson called the proposal consistent and brilliant in the newspaper Svenska Dagbladet. Obviously, the project was impossible due to practical and ec economical reasons, but most part of the old buildings would soon be demolished anyway and replaced by modern constructions, but that's another story. Totally. Yeah.
Le Corbusier's plans were founded around these general principles to provide efficient communication networks, to ensure vast areas of greenery throughout the city, to increase access to increase access to the sun and to reduce urban traffic. With his architecture, with his architecture, he wanted to achieve maximum functionality at minimum cost. The modernist wanted to reshape the post-war living conditions where overcrowding and diseases were widespread. They designed well-lit, well-ventilated dwellings, often with large garden areas to promote a healthy lifestyle. Le Corbusier had these principles in mind when drawing all of his city plans. And already in the 1920s, he began to make plans for the center of Paris. He called it uh, Radiant City. And in the center of the plan stood zoning, a clear uh, division of the city's different parts. Uh, Radiant City consisted of 24 kind of cross-shaped skyscrapers, each 200 meters tall, meaning to house businesses and hotels. Uh, around these um, would be uh, prefabricated apartment buildings around 50 meters tall, where the workers would live. Each block uh, would house 2,700 people. On the ground floor would be laundry, uh, daycare and restaurants, and on the top floor a pool and rooftop terraces. An extensive metro system would transport the people between the different zones and also raised highways. Um, lastly, there were areas for industries and storage, and of course, between the zones, were large gardens and leisure areas. Of course, there's a lot of advantages to Le Corbusier's thoughts and principles, like equality and the health focus. But of course, the whole idea of an ideal city is utopian. He was highly criticized for having a too rationalized vision of a city, too orderly and too organized. And of course, it was seen as very controversial to want to demolish whole cities and their histories. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I um, hope you found this video interesting. Um, uh, and if you did, check out our previous videos. We have a lot of videos about mainly design, not so much uh, architecture, but yeah. Check them out anyway. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.